morning. Morning. Tammy's still sleeping. Quartzite. Burr. Beautiful sunrise this morning. Oh, it's a beautiful day, not a cloud in the sky. We got some new visitors. some coyotes last night right over here a bunch of coyotes in the riverbed you could just hear them they must have been right in here not a cloud in the sky oh, it's gonna be a great day all right let's go back inside and make some coffee oh, here comes the sun yeah. A little chilly. Beautiful though. It's gonna be a beautiful day. My solar panel. My solar panel hooked up here. solar panel around so I'll get some sunlight when the sun gets up. Let's go make some coffee. Then we'll make some bacon and eggs later. Five 
five minutes, I'll have some coffee. coffee. Yeah, I got some already here. Mm -hmm. I did this on the old-fashioned way. Nice. Uh, morning. Let's looking around, all these new people pulled in last night. Oh, really? Yep. That little view over there is new. He just pulled in last night with, after dark. Uh, just about got some coffee ready. I got my little buddy going. Warmed it up to 48 degrees. If you can see that or not. 48 degrees. This is quartzite. Not supposed to be cold here. <laughs> Got my coffee going. Hmm. I did. First, I woke up, I did a pot on the stove to warm it up. And, uh, this is leftover from last night. So I had some of that. And the sun's coming up already. And I got my, uh, this is my little one here. It's bringing in a whooping two watts. <laughs> two watts. I got my little solar panel put in the front roof, front window there. That's my little uh, 60 watt solar panel. Charge up my uh, Zoom Bros. So it's getting a little bit of power right there. So we watched a little bit of uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ooh. No, what was it? It was, it was X-Files. X-Files. All right. Just waking up in the old RV. All right. Breakfast time. Bacon and eggs. What you doing? Oh. Let it warm up a little more. Oh. Sun's out, yes. The weather channel said it was 37 here this morning. So it was colder. It wasn't my imagination. Colder than Phoenix. There we go. Wow, they really cut this thin. Well, that's not cut very good. I thought this was supposed to be thick cut. That's not thick cut. Dang. This is bar S. Yeah, but it's cut like, it's not cut like the other Costco bake. It's cut really thin. I'm having a hard time peeling it off here. Really like Costco bacon. And you know, great value isn't bad either. But this stuff, bar S, I don't know. This stuff's really hard to cut. It's like paper thin. I don't know why they do that. I guess I get you more pieces, but...
survey. We are at the famous quartzite rock alignment. And uh, I'm gonna run the drone around. If I didn't show you already, I'll show you in a minute what it looks like from the air, because you can't really see what it is from the ground. It's kind of hard. So we're walking out. We have a little, kind of have it fenced off so you can't drive over here, understandably. <coughs> Beautiful day. Ah, oh, this is great. Got a cloud in the sky. This is called the quartzite rock alignment, and I guess this was made back in the 30s, late 20s, 30s, when they had airmail delivery out here. And this was put on the, they built these rocks up so you could see it from the air, maybe if you were flying like 2,000 feet up above thousand feet coming in and air mail delivery you could see where court you could see the sign here look for the sign it would have an arrow pointing to the airport so this uh, these rocks were put built up here years ago just laid them out here in the desert spelling quartzite like a big aerial sign And uh, I see. Now, if you go on Google and look it up, a couple of places they say this was used in World War II. So I, I'm not sure. There were a couple other websites that said no, this was made earlier than that. This was uh, built out here in the, I want to say early 30s, late 20s, when they started airmail delivery across Arizona and these, these this particular sign was used to guide the airmail uh, planes in to deliver the airmail. Now I have a note that says quartzite and the big O and then an arrow. And that looks like an 11. So I'm gonna guess 11 miles, maybe? It's easier to see it with the drone. I got the drone up, so I'll put the picture in there so you can see it from the air, but maybe it's easier to make out from the air. And then, oh, there's north. That's N with a big arrow there. And sure enough, that points up north to that mountain there. That way is Havasu City, Lake Havasu, Lake Havasu City up that way. Parker, go up a little farther, you'll reach Parker. And then uh, on the other side of those mountains is Blythe, Ehrenberg, and the Colorado River. So you got north going that way, south to Yuma. And just a beautiful day, there's even people now there's a sign down the road that says no camping past a certain point, but we did see some people camping. Now maybe they just didn't see the sign or they didn't, you know, I don't know. Um, it doesn't seem like there's anybody out here to really care one way or another, but there was a sign just down the road about a mile or two that said no camping past this point. But it does look like people have been out here before. And there's Tammy over there getting rocks. Let's see if I can zoom in on you. Nope. <laughs> Find any rocks? So there's a lot of quartz out here, that's for sure. In just a minute, we're going to go up the road, and not too far from here is an Indian artifact. It's kind of a historical site. It's an Indian, I don't know what you call it, desert rock painting called the Intaglio or the Fisherman, they call it. And uh, I don't know how long it's been there, probably hundreds of years. Uh, so it would be kind of cool. I guess they used rocks, different color rocks. And uh, in the sand, they made a picture of a, 
a fisherman, a spear fisherman. Kind of cool. This is uh, Plumosa Road right here. If you take this road and just keep going, keep going on this road, you'll wind up in Bose, Bose, Arizona. Goes on past this. But if you wind up there, then if you take the other highway up, you'll you'll still wind up in Parker. All roads lead to Parker from here, so to speak. So to speak. But they do have it uh, cordoned off, so you can't drive over here, which is good. Otherwise, crazy people would probably come out here and camp out here or something. But uh, interesting geological area. We're finding like volcanic rock mixed in here. Yeah, you wonder where's the volcano, right? Volcanic flow area. Maybe even underwater. We found some rocks that looked like they had uh, barnacles and seashells on them. Yeah, see if they got the fence here, so you have to go through the fence. And there's the highway right over there. We see that truck. That's Plumosa Road. And that road just keeps going up, and connects up to 95. Then at the, the first five miles of that road, there were people camping, uh, boondocking. It's BLM in this area. What does this say? Notice. Enjoy, do not destroy your American heritage. Yeah. Well, that's been there for years. Something I was reading about this, somebody thought that this was used in World War II when, when they were training the bombers. But uh, another person came on and said, no, if you're running bombers, you're gonna be running a higher altitude and that, that sign's not gonna be easily seen at a higher altitude. I can understand that. You get past a certain altitude, that sign, even as big as it is, big as that sign is, you're probably not gonna see it once you get past two or 3,000 feet. In fact, when, you, when I was with the drone, I had a hard time seeing it once I got up higher. So I can only imagine how low the airmail planes flew, right? It's like those crop dusters. You ever fl go drive by and see those guys crop dusting? They come in low. The airmail probably did the same way. They probably just went right over these mountains. Not a place you want to be in the summertime. Oh, it gets to be 105, 110 out here, and it's just not a not a very pleasant place to be. April, May, that's kind of the time of year here. I know that people camp here in April, and April's kind of a coin toss. You can have a weekend or two in April where it's beautiful, beautiful, but you might have a weekend in April and May where it gets really hot. And uh, it does cool off at night. So I guess if you're stuck here for some reason in April and May and it gets warm in the day, it does cool off at night because you, you don't have the uh, concrete here to hold everything in. But it can get hot in the daytime. All right, we're gonna take a pack up here and go see the uh, intaglio. How did we miss this? 
<laughs> okay. Wow. All right. Motor okay. vehicle closed area. Shall we go this for a This is going to be cool. Yes. It's a nice weather for walking. Okay. So these are like um, Indian room? It's like an Indian painting with rocks. Cool. Hiking to the fishermen. Amy's already over here. You can't drive. You have to park by the road and then walk in. But it's not that far. It's a short walk. The place really nice. Tammy. Right, Bose Fisherman. Donated by the Friends of the Fisherman with cooperation from the Bureau of Land Management in an effort to protect this fragile site. And 1990. And all the people who helped out. Just over that way a little bit. things like this out here and the question is why why would somebody come out here and do this years and years and years and years ago Doesn't that, I mean it makes you wonder it says here that um, the story of the Kumastamo Kumastamo story of a god Kumastamo who threw, thrust the spear into the ground to make the mighty Colorado River flow. It's just, I don't know, it's just fascinating to me why somebody would come out here years, hundreds, two hundred, five hundred years ago and draw a picture like this in the dirt. Looks like there's another. Say shout out to all of you. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Uh, thank you for being subscribers. And we are almost, I think when I did this video, we just went over 500 subscribers. So thank you so much for subscribing to its channel. And looking forward to the next year of some places that we've never been to and making some travels to some new campgrounds that we've never seen before. So thank you again. Watch this channel. We've got more things coming up in the year ahead. This is Dave from Holiday for Two saying thank you again for all its subscribers. Have a great day. Go out and check out the world. It's a beautiful world out there. Check it out. Do some camping. Bye.